Okay, we're back at the mixed fuel garage here. And uh, like I said before, I already loosened that. That's why I did it, because now I can just grab a hold of it with my hand and turn this right off. So we're going to turn this off. Now it's under, there is a spring in there and it is under pressure. I've never had one pop or whatever, but I guess they could. But basically all that ever happens is this just drops down like that. Okay, so then what you're going to have to do, I'm pretty sure this is a 14 millimeter. What I do is I pull this down and he, he's going to have to hold this up. It's easier with two people. So he holds that up. I'm going to pull it down. There's a nut in there. We got to get this on that nut. And it's sometimes it can be. Damping rod can I go down? No, the damping rod can't go down. If it does, then. Okay, I'm going to give him the wrench and I'm going to pull this down. Is it 14 or is it bigger? It's bigger. It's bigger. Okay, so it isn't a 14. So, so you got to pull this down until that's exposed and it's not 16. a 15 either. So I guess they're all different. When I did the DR, the YZ and that KX, they were all 14s for some reason. Okay, so 17. Once you get it in there, then you can leave it up. You're going to need tons of rags to do this job. It's the most messiest job ever. Like so, in the universe. So now what we're going to do is spin that off that shaft. So I can hold on to that. And sometimes these are a bugger, so. There we go, so now it's loose. So he just holds that wrench on there like that. I'll take a little pressure off the spring if I can. Oh. Was it supposed to come off? No. Well, you weren't holding it. I was holding it and put it in there. Slide the plastic, the white plastic thing down. It's not moving. When you moved the shock, it came out. Ready. Well, was I supposed to be underneath that? No, that doesn't really matter, does it? Go. Just make sure you know what order they come off in. I usually lay them up here on the table with what order they come off in, which would be just like that. Now that dampening rod's going to fall down. That's fine. Well, that's just the, that's the, this is the dampening rod, isn't it? Yep, take that dampening rod out. Okay, so I took the spring off, the dampening rod off, the dampening rod's in the center. Lay them up on the bench too, and now the fun begins. Which, if there's any four coil in there, what we need? You dump it out. Oh, okay. So you, if there's any four coil left in there, you got to dump it out. <laughs> if there isn't none, yep, you got to actuate that inside piece. You gotta move that up and down, up and down, up and down. See, now it's coming out. And it's like peanut butter. So you can tell the kid that had this didn't do no maintenance on it. Smells like peanut butter too. just nasty. That stuff's way too thick. It's 
what I usually do. Take it down on here. He can bring that shock upside down. And we'll just let it sit here for a few minutes. We'll clamp it in the vise. Best is the Okay. That's the way I usually do it to get all the stuff out. Okay, so the next step, what we're going to do, this is the dust seal. And basically all you're going to do is get yourself a little screwdriver and go underneath this and pop it up. And it's just going to slide up. And when we get that off, we're going to clean that all up. So that part's up. Then inside there, there's a little wire. And you're just going to, I usually like to find the end of it if I can. Which I can't really see it right now, but try not to bend it up if you do it, it's not going to go back in right. So there's like little gaps and then just keep going right around and take this off. So this was what was inside there. If you can see that, yeah you can, it's not the greatest, but so that's inside there. So we put that aside. Now what you do is you take it, you're going to compress it. You're going to pull out as hard as you can to get it to pop off. And sometimes they're a bugger to get out and sometimes they come right out. There you go. So that's it. That's out. So there's our fork seal right here. And what you want to make sure you don't do is lose any of this. So make sure you put the forks, the them back the same way that you took everything off. So again, I just set them on the bench the way that I took them off, even though I know how they go, because I've done it. On here there's a little band, and I don't know, I guess we might be too high now. I think yeah, we're waiting. There we go. Okay, so there's a band on top of here, and you just take a screwdriver in, you just twist it up just a little bit, pull that off and you pull that band off. Now with this you want to make sure there's, I don't know what the coating is on it, but here's the band. Okay, now I can't see because he turned the thing. Uh, there's the band, there's like a coating on it, and uh, turn it up just a little bit. There we go. You can't really see it. I'm sorry it's dark in here, but there's like a dark color on it. You want to make sure that isn't all wore off. If it is, then you're going to have to replace it, and that means it's not riding right. There's going to be another ring. There's going to be a washer. And then you got the, fork, uh, the, the actual fork seal. So you got to get that pulled off. Okay, so here's the old fork seal. And the and this is the spring that was on the fork seal. Now, when you do this, make sure when you put the new fork seal on that the spring that goes on is down. We're going to take the dust seal off because we want to clean that. That dust seal needs all cleaned off, and this all needs wiped off. Now, my DR was not a cartridge type, so I don't know if I ever filmed the cartridge type, but we wanted to do we wanted to do a video of it all anyhow, so. Now these forks here don't have a dampener on them. Uh, if you have aftermarket you will, but there is no dampener on this one. So, I don't see it unless it's underneath that little plunger there, but I ain't gonna mess with it. Make sure you clean everything off real good. These forks like, they look like they're in really good shape. There's no dings and gouges in them and stuff, so. Now you can buy the kits with the dust seal on it, or, not. Nah, we got the kit without the dust seals because generally the dust seals aren't that bad. I mean, you can look at them. If they're all boogered up and stuff, you can get the kit with the dust seals. But we're getting the fork seals right now. So we're going to take the dust seal and we're going to slide that back down on there. Like that. Just be careful when you're putting it on. There is a lip there. They do make a bullet for these. Uh, I might invest in one here if we keep doing <laughs> doing these all the time. Which we have then. <coughs> so that goes, remember I said the spring down. So you can use a baggie or 
if you have one of them bullets, the bullets work good. I guess that's what they call them. Bullets. So we're going to slide the, the baggie over top of this. That didn't really work out because it got cut too short. And you're going to take this and slide it down over. And the baggie's going to help you clear that, which it did. It, it just helps. It helps clear it so it doesn't mess it all up. Okay, so now I got the dust seal on and I got the fork seal. So remember, I put everything back the same way. The washer goes on, this ring goes on. And then when we're, put, when we're putting this back in that cartridge, what's going to happen is this ring right here is going to seat down in there and keep the fork stable. And then this one's going to go down in on top of that, which I usually have that on top of that, and then the fork seal is going to seat down in, and then your other one's going to seat. But this is really what holds everything in from moving around, this one here, right here, which as soon as I walk in the light, you can't see. So. Sorry, it's cold out and we have the heat in the garage. We're trying to heat the garage and everything, so normally we'd have all the doors open. There'd be tons of light in here. Okay, so we're ready to put this fork back together. This is 10, so we're just using both mine? Yeah. So just have yourself a rag or something on the ground so you don't get stuffed all banged up. You're going to slide that in there. And now the fun part begins. So he's going to have to hold this for me until I get my little devices that I made. So what I did is I just cut a piece of PVC and I just put it on here and I just hold it as best as I can and I use that to hammer this down in. You'll hear it, it'll change, the tone will change when it's seated. Stop would be more Fine. appropriate word. Stop. Okay, this washer's got to come down. Yeah, because it clamps onto this and then you can just... I think that's my neck is less than it. Down part of it? I don't know, let's uh, tip it so that the uh, washer comes back down so I can see it. Because it was going in Okay, so I used my little PVC things. Pounded that down in. The seal I found in the same, but with the seal I don't do it as hard, obviously. You don't have to. Um, grab your little retaining clip, and now that could, that's going to go back in. It goes in a lot easier with a screwdriver, so you'll have to grab a screwdriver here. And grab the other fork. And when you put it in, you just got to make sure that it. Uh, it's snapped all the way down into that little channel. There's a little channel that go, it rides in. Because if it ain't, it ain't going to do no good for you. It's just going to pop it right back out. All in there. Okay, so then we got that little spring retainer in. You slide your dust seal up. Hold that up. And then this one, usually, you can just push down by hand. If you can't, you can use, I use like a rubber mallet just on the edge. Just tap it with a rubber mallet. Can you use that tactic? 
So there we go. That's back together. Now we get to refill it and all the fun stuff. So, now I have a little measure that I made for these. They're all generally in the same area, so let me just go by that. You're going to fill this up until it's full, and then you're going to actuate it and pump it to get it circulated through. And how I like to do that is just to screw this thing on the top instead of grabbing a hold of it. That's blue. And we're going to screw this on a little bit. Then you can pump it. Going fast doesn't make a difference. You just need to do full all the way up, all the way down. It doesn't matter how fast you go. I like to do it slower because it sucks up the fluid easier. use a syringe and I put a piece of tape I measured it with a piece of tape and that's how I do it all right so he pumped it and everything we got all the air out and what I did is I got a hose I got it measured with a piece of black tape so all I do is take this slide it in to the piece the black tape is at the very top of the thing and I should have already had it compressed but that's fine and then I just Pull the fluid out until it doesn't pull no more. And it might take a couple times. Should just bring that down here. Once it stops sucking, you know you're at the level you need to be. They actually make things for this, but I just used the turkey baster. I already had it anyhow, so a lot of the stuff we do, we already got the stuff, so I'm not going out and buying nothing. I don't have to. There we go. Okay, so now we're where we are. We can put everything back together. Now, the inside of that is going to want to drop. So you got to hold it up and get your spring and stuff on there. Slide your spring down over and have somebody help you hold it. Drop the spring and hurry up and grab it. What I do is stick my thumb in here. Hold it. And this gets screwed on like that. <coughs> okay, now we're back to the wrenches. up Got it. 
There you go. One's done. Yeah, it's not like spring, like the. Yep. And it's, you can see it's wiping it clean. And there's one. Then we're going to proceed with the other one. So, thanks for watching. And once we start putting them back on the bike, we will uh, we'll record it again.